Uh, good evening to each and everyone. Sa ating po mga FB uh, viewers as a uh, Zoom link. And of course, our uh, live attenders po sa Santa Ana, main Ecclesia. At syempre din po sa ating mahal na pastor, sa lahat, magandang gabi po sa kanilang lahat. I again thank you, uh, Pastor, for giving me again the privilege to just uh, share and preach to you God's word in your behalf. And I pray that uh, this message would be a blessing to each and every one. Let me call your attention to uh, the book of uh, Mark chapter 4 in verse uh, 36 or 35 verse 35 until verse 41 Mark chapter 4 verse 35 to 41 and after that we'll uh, jump to uh, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 35, In the same day when the even was come, he, had, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? In Hebrews chapter 11, in verse 6, the Bible says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I'd like to preach to you tonight the subject, the faith that we have. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much, O God, again, for this wonderful time you've given to us to just uh, study your word. And I pray, O God, that you'll be the one to give us the understanding of your word. May the Holy Spirit be the one to just guide us and lead us. And I pray, O oh God, that that would just set enlightenment for the things that we will be hearing tonight. Thank you again, Lord, for my pastor, O oh God, for just uh, uh, allowing me to just again uh, speak in his behalf. May uh, you just... Uh, you alone, Lord Jesus, just be magnified and glorified in our midst. We thank you, Lord, for everything, for your goodness and your faithfulness to us. For this we pray in Jesus' most wonderful name. Amen. You may be seated. The miracle of the calming of the sea perhaps was one of his, or the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's greatest miracle. In fact, it is his 12th miracle among the other miracles that Jesus Christ did, 37 miracles that Jesus Christ performed during his life on earth when he started ministering at the age of 30. Faith could be the next greatest word besides love that we can encounter in the Word of God. In fact, faith faithful, appears 402 times in the Word of God. Uh, second, to love, which appears 558 times. And of course, hope, which is 
which appeared 144 times in the Word of God. Faith is a great word because it was actually by faith that we receive Christ as our Savior and Lord. You remember the day when we got saved. And it's only by the grace of God and through faith when we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. He died on the cross. He was buried. And the third day he rose again and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. It is all by faith that we accepted him as our personal Savior. Faith is also a great word because it was actually God's way of testing our full trust in him. And third, faith is a great word because this is the only way to please God. We read a while ago in Hebrews 11 verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. It is actually faith that allows us to believe in God. There is nothing in us or no work or anything that uh, a human a being like us, okay, allowed us to believe in him. But it is all because of the Lord's doing. And it is that faith that allows us to believe in him. It is also faith that allows us to see and feel his presence in our lives. I mean, no one has seen God at any time. Am I right? But it is faith that allows us to realize his closeness to us when we walk according to his will. Faith is the connecting power into the spiritual realm, which links us with God and makes him become a tangible reality to the sense perceptions of a person. Faith is the basic ingredient to begin a relationship with God. We have heard a lot of preachings and teachings about faith. But remember this, we don't learn faith by teachings alone. We learn faith by experiencing it in our lives. We have read in our text a while ago about the calming of the sea during a storm that uh, the disciples, the apostles have experienced how the Lord and his disciples were in the midst of the storm. How Jesus Christ have been with his disciples, apostles, for quite some time. Perhaps the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ have been with his apostles, disciples for more than a year. Ministering to people. Witnessing and seeing some of the miracles Jesus Christ did like the great catch of the fishes in their fishing boat when Peter and James were there, the cleansing of a man with leprosy, they have witnessed that, or raising a widow's son from the dead, among others, would perhaps be enough to trust Jesus Christ that they are safe. And yet we find in Mark chapter 4, Jesus Christ saying, how is it that ye have no faith? You see, you know, we may be perhaps in a similar uh, situation that when we are bombarded with trials, difficulties, or pestilences may happen, or, or sicknesses, we even would uh, be in a situation where the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ would say to us, how is it that you have no faith? You see, every child of God starts his life by faith and ends in faith. In fact, in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, in verse 2, looking unto Jesus, 
the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God. Hebrews 12, verse 2. I believe that one of the things that allowed us, or even the apostles or disciples, to waver is their loss of focus on Jesus Christ. You see, biblical faith, or our faith, depends upon its object. The believer's object of faith is none other than Jesus Christ. How faithful you are will depend on how you develop your close fellowship with our Lord. The degree of your faithfulness to God is equal to the degree of your closeness to God. We may have some idols or perhaps, you know, uh, favorite uh, uh, men in the Bible that the Lord had used. The patriarch Moses, perhaps, or even Abraham, or perhaps King David, or Peter, or even Apostle Paul, who is the missionary to the Gentiles. But you know what? In all those characters that the Lord had used. You find out when you read God's word from the Old Testament, from Genesis to Revelation, the New Testament. It is all that Jesus Christ is the central message of each of those books, you see. So we find that biblical faith or we believers, our object of faith is none other than Jesus Christ alone. No man can have an evidence of true faithfulness to God without realizing the need to know Jesus Christ more. Bible says in Philippians chapter 3 in verse 9, And be found in him not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Galatians 2 verse 16 says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but what? By the faith of Jesus Christ. Even when we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So we find, number one, that our faith, the faith that we have, should only depend on Jesus Christ alone. Number two, biblical faith, or the faith that we have, is a development process. It's just like a child that should grow and develop developing his intellect as he studies in a school from pre-elementary and then getting graduated from pre-elementary, elementary, high school, and college. There's a developing process, you see? It is also true for us who have that faith. The faith that, that, that we have, you see, and God is not simply interested in solving our problems. He is more interested in developing our faith. And we ought to ask ourselves, are we making any progress in the faith that the Lord gave to us? Are we really growing in our faith in God? Or are we growing old and grumpy? Or are we growing up alive and still excited in the Christian life. I praise God that the Lord found me and allowed me to be in the MBBE family. Praising Him and we, we, with uh, all thankfulness, of course, to the guidance of our beloved pastor. And for more than 30 years, I've been in the MBBE family and still serving God. 
with all what we may call, what we may call the obstacles, the rough roads, you know, the rough seas, the mountains and valleys that I experienced. And yet, because that faith that the Lord gave me is still developing, it should progress. And the same is true with each and every one of us. Are we growing up alive and still excited in the Christian life? That's why in James chapter 2, in verse 17, the Bible says here, Even so faith, if it had not works, is dead, being alone. It is actually necessary for you and me to work out our faith. In James 1 verse 3, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. It is a choice we have to make if you really want to grow because our faithfulness identifies how we treat God in our lives. Number three, biblical faith or the faith that we have will be tested will be tested. God brings storms into our lives because you don't develop faith in the calm. We develop faith in the midst of a crisis. Troubles, trials. There is just no growth without tension. Remember that. A believer or a Christian is not a person without problems, but rather he is a person who has the problem solver living within. We look at the life of Abraham. In the book of, Abraham, uh, in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, in verse 8, the Bible says there, by faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, and not knowing whither he went. The trial, the testing, that faith that Abraham had was just to obey the Lord. He never knew what will, what will happen in the future or what is that place that the Lord gave him, the instructions that the Lord gave him. And yet, he just obeyed. In fact, more so in verse 17 and verse 18 of the same chapter in Hebrews chapter 11, by faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Now, just imagine with me Abraham and Sarah being barren, and one day, the, the uh, prayer request of Sarah has been answered and was given to them as son Isaac. But then a few years came when they were enjoying their lives as a family, Abraham and Sarah and, you know, Isaac was just enjoying their lives as a family. Then, there was instruction from the Lord an instruction to give up Isaac, to put him to death, to offer him. Now, if, 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 I, w if I was Abraham, I, I, I really would not understand that. I, perhaps I would say something against the Lord. But you know what? Abraham was just true and so faithful to God. And he just offered up his only begotten son without his faith wavering. He just said, oh yes, I'll just obey. How about, you know, Noah? When the Lord instructed him, you know, to minister and warn the people back then during his time, he never knew what was rain. He never experienced rain. Never knew what was that flood that was going to, you know, to happen to, during that time. Yet he just obeyed. How about Joseph, who had been accused so many times? And in fact, 
He just said, and yet he said, God meant it unto good. Genesis 50 verse 20, he said, But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. And I can go on and on and about Job and what happened to him. And yet, we find their faith strong. So what am I saying here? Our faith, the faith that we have, will be tested. Will be tested. So we look into the testings that we, we, we're going to receive. There is work to do. That is one way of the reasons we have the many ministries in our ecclesia. The worship services we do almost daily is to prepare us for heaven and our permanent home. But we'll find out that even in these things that we do, let us not be captured, you know, unaware. Because in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12, the Bible already tells us, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be also glad with exceeding joy. So, wag kang magtaka. Wag kang magulat na meron mga pagsubok ng buhay. Dahil sa isang tunay naman ng palataya, ay darating po ang testings. You see? In James, in fact, the Bible says also in James 1 verse 2, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. In verse 3 of James 1, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Every true believer of the Lord that his faith will be tested. You know, Jesus Christ loves us so much that he not only accepts us as who we are, but you know what? He loves us so much that he will not also allow us to remain the same as we are because the Lord desires that our faith grow. The Lord desires that our faith increase. The Lord desires that we persevere until the coming of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The storms will not last forever. The next day, there will be sunshine. Another one that we ought to, be, uh, to know is the faith that we have is that Biblical faith allows us to serve him faithfully. The God who calls faithful men. God has every reason to use his very own people at his disposal. Remember, we are the clay and he is the potter. The Bible says in Isaiah 64 verse 8, But now, O Lord... Thou art our father, we are the clay, and thou art potter, and we all are the work of thy hand. God has every right to do whatever, whomever, and whenever he commands us to do. In Romans chapter 9, in verse 20 and 21, Nay, but O man, who art thou that replies against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it? Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and, unto, and another unto dishonor? So we find the Lord, we as his creation at his disposal. God is the perfect one and the ultimate one 
that every faithful believer of the Lord should desire in his own life. And you know why? Because number one, he is all-knowing. He is omniscient. In Isaiah chapter 66, verse 18, For I know that their works and their thoughts it shall come, that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. Every faithful believer of the Lord should also desire Jesus Christ in his own life because he is also all-loving. The agape love that the Lord, you know, has given to us. In Psalm chapter 5, verse 16, the Bible says, His mouth is most sweet, yea, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. We also should desire the Lord in our own lives. Why? Because the Lord is ever faithful to you and me. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, in verse 9, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. So, we find here how the Lord can use us in a wonderful way as we increase our faith in Him. In spite of the troubles, in spite of the trials, in spite of the difficulties that we experience in life while here on earth, I pray that each and every one would remain faithful to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, faith is like a muscle. The muscle, it grows, it grows by lifting weights. Tama po ba? The weights that is in that, you know, barbell, okay, are the resistance. The doubts, the mental whispers that comes from the enemy, and circumstances that tell us the opposite of what faith must believe. When God seems to be absent, and perhaps horrible circumstances fall upon us or around us. Everybody seems to shout, well, God isn't here. Kumbaga ba, wala namang pakailaman Diyos. Sinasabi niya sa sarili niya na uh, I have been in this, you know, probably for so long a time. But you know what? He cares for us. In those circumstances, that faith curls the barbell toward the heart and says, No, God is good. He is still good. He is for you and for me. He has a plan. It is the circumstances adverse to our faith that becomes the vehicle for our growth. They are the weight on the barbell. So, we look into how the Lord works in, through our faith. As I conclude, God did not call us only to repentance. The Bible says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us who are not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Second Peter chapter 3. Verse 9. But you know what? The Lord also called us to serve Him. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28, Wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably, with reverence and godly fear. I pray tonight that the faith that we have, you and I, all of us who claim to be believers in the Lord, all who came to know Christ and is born again, will increase their faith in God. As I end, we find here how, you know, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has also spoken 
to his people. In Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, let us be like Joshua. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much, O God, for realizing, O God, the need for each and every child of God. To be able, O God, to just uh, strengthen the faith that we have, to increase our faith, especially as we grow each day in the Lord. It is only through testings and trials that we may be able to uh, surpass all these things. And I pray, O oh God, that you just be the one to look into the need of each and every child of God, and that they may be able, O oh God, from this day forth to serve you wholeheartedly in their lives. Thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness to us. For this we pray in Jesus' most wonderful name. Amen. God bless you. To God be the glory.